girls. Welcome to the Unfuck Yourself and Be Beautiful podcast with me, Alexis Magdalene. Today we're talking about the letter B, um, and that is for build your boundaries, bitch. Because I have talked so much on boundaries and healthy boundaries and things like that, and I think the hardest thing is like actually implementing them because I have lived my life based on kindness, and I feel like I'm totally being a bitch. Every time I put in a boundary, I just have this massive guilt and shame for putting a boundary in place and it's so hard because I don't know how to overcome it I don't know how to I can't say I don't know how I'm I'm putting in steps to overcome it and work towards it and I literally have to talk myself into it for example um I worked all day today and I wanted to go home and I'm not feeling good and I still had to like deal with this guilt and shame of like okay you need to go home you don't feel good but everybody's in a hurry we've got a lot going on this week and you're not really helping even though I did everything that I needed to do plus some extra I sat on the computer all day so I look like I wasn't really helping others or contributing and so then I feel guilty like maybe they didn't see me do this maybe you know they don't know what I've done etc etc so this is where I need to go back. I mean, I'm finally, we're doing the alphabet here. A was for apathy, B is for boundaries. Um, and build them, please, because it's a process. So start now and really get involved into what you want your boundaries to look like. I keep telling myself, I just don't have time. I don't have time to do those things. There's not enough time in the day. I'm too busy. I need to work harder. And so I'm not giving myself space or allowing myself time to develop or do the things that I want to do to help me move forward. I keep telling myself I I love yoga. I've said it a million times on the podcast. I don't remember the last time I've done yoga. It's been quite a while and that is because I let go of my boundaries. Those boundaries that I had put in place, you have to keep in place. You have to keep working on them because once you start to slip a little and you start to let go of those boundaries that you had, you start to backtrack and you have to start all over again because people will start seeing that you slipped and they will start not on purpose. I don't think people are, are malicious on purpose or most people. I'm sure there are some, but the people in my life, I don't feel like they're, they're trying to be malicious or trying to knock down my boundaries. I think I've allowed it for so long that it's really hard for them to grasp when I'm putting a boundary in. And it's hard for me to even grasp when I'm putting a boundary in. It's hard for me to keep that boundary in place because it feels foreign to me and it just feels out of place. And so it's really important that I keep pushing and trying and not pushing other people's boundaries, like being sure I respect other boundaries in the process of doing mine as well. And it's really hard, especially working with family and and just kind of, I don't really have a lot of friends. I have a few people I talk to, but I'm scared. I have trust issues really bad. I don't like to vent to people. Um, my trust has been broken more than once, and I'm sure I've broken people's trust too, and that's what I'm working on. And that's another reason why I haven't actively sought out friends or actively put time into friends right now is because I'm so busy trying to figure out what I need that I don't have the time or the effort or energy to give to somebody what they deserve in a friendship. And so that's a boundary that I've put in place and I continually am working on. And sometimes I slip and I keep venting to people and things that I shouldn't vent. And we should be able to vent. We should find people that we trust in. But I, I'm not there yet. My trust hasn't been built yet. And I have friends that I love and adore and that I feel like I put on the back burner. But I just have to. It's, it's these boundaries that I that I'm working on and these boundaries that I have to keep in place. And eventually everything will... I don't think everything really falls into place perfectly, but things fall into place and work out the way that they're supposed to work out. So boundaries, bitch, that's what we're working on because we really need them. We really need them. Today, I know I should have left earlier, exhausted, tired, and I've been wanting to do a podcast for, it was just 444. I've been wanting to do a podcast for so long and I, I just... I knew I wanted to make it about boundaries because I've been struggling, but instead of actively working on boundaries, I just kept thinking I need to talk about boundaries because 
talking helps me figure it out. It helps me sort out um, what I'm thinking, what I need, what I've learned in therapy. Um, a big thing, I don't remember if I brought it up last time, but I've been through a lot of therapy since the last podcast too. Uh, my therapist and I spoke about kindness. And this is, I don't know if this really falls, I guess it does fall into boundaries because it's something, even though it sounds so simple, it was so mind-blowing to me. It's just something I needed to hear from her. She said that, what are your values? We talk a lot about what my values are. And my biggest value is kindness. I talk about it all the time. I, I write about it. I do so much around kindness and trying to be a kinder person and gentler person and a better person and a light and kind for others. And she said, you value it so much. Imagine if you implemented it for yourself first. Like if when you go to give somebody kindness, imagine if you gave yourself kindness first before giving more than you can get, like emptying that kindness from your cup that you should have given to yourself. So mind blowing. I, I like, I didn't even know what to say because it's so true. I value it so much, but I don't practice it for myself. And if anyone deserves it, it's me, right? I deserve to be treated kindly the way that I treat others. And the same goes for you. You deserve to be treated kindly by yourself. You deserve that. We we need to put that boundary in place where we extend kindness to ourselves before we extend it to others. That's a boundary, a personal boundary that just needs to be um, thought of, that needs to be written. And to me, that didn't even seem like a boundary, but it really is. It's really saying, no, 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 I have to take a step back and be kind to myself before I can even offer that to you. So I want you to think today, like what type of boundaries you need for yourself. Um, if you want, you can leave messages for me in comments too, because I'd love to know what your boundaries are, because I'm sure they're totally different than what I'm thinking of. And maybe they'll even give me inspiration to help me set healthy boundaries. Um, and I just, I want to know, I want to know what... What are boundaries that you are working on or what are boundaries that you wish that you could actually set with people? Because I know there's so many for me and they're, it's just so hard for me to do. It's so hard for me to set because I just don't want to disappoint anybody. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't want to seem like a bitch. I, I really don't. Like I've never wanted to give off that vibe. And I know the more and more I cut people out and the more and more I work on me, the more and more I, I seem like I'm giving the cold sh shoulder, the more I become this person that scares me. And then I fall back again because I'm like, no, 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 don't be that person. Don't be that bitch. Like you, you don't want to go that way. But it's just because I have this idea of that, that setting boundaries and taking care of yourself is this it's a limiting belief, a limiting belief that I have that taking care of yourself is a bad thing, that that cutting off others is horrible because you're so mean. Like taking care of yourself is a bad thing. Boundaries are a bad thing. That's what I have been not taught because nobody actively said those things or taught those things. But over my lifetime, those are things that my that I've I don't know how you word that. Those are things that I have learned by the things around me or the teachings or the way things have been worded, like, or fears that I've had from seeing other people or seeing other examples. It's just something that I've held on to that I need to let go of, that that's not true. That just because I think that boundaries mean you're a bitch doesn't actually mean it. It could mean you're like a badass bitch. Like, don't we all want to be that? Isn't that this big thing this year is like hot girl summer, badass bitch, things like that, like boss bitch. Those are where we want to be. And yet being a bitch is so scary. Like having, being that like gossiped about that you're uh, not a nice person or that you're not a good friend is, it's hard. It's really hard and scary. Nobody ever wants to be in that place. And I know, I know I've been talked about in circles and I have to just let it go. I have to just be like, you know, I set a boundary and I have to keep it up and I have to, I have to let go of the things that I can't control because that's the thing about boundaries. You have to put this boundary in place and then you kind of have to let it go. Like 
this is my wall. I put up a wall and it's not coming down because every time it comes down and those people that you set them up for keep coming back over, they take things little by little and maybe not physically taking things. They're not stealing. They're just taking things that you're allowing. Oh, sure. Yeah, you can borrow my favorite shirt. Oh, yeah, you can. Uh, there's another hair tie, you know, like just little things. And then eventually you look and you're like, where are my things? Like, why do I have nothing left? Why did I give more than I could? Because that's what you keep doing. You keep giving more than you have. And eventually you're going to look around and there's going to be nothing left because you gave it all because you were so scared that these people were going to say hateful things. Then why are you letting them in? If you're so scared of what these people are going to say or the guilt that you're going to feel, why are you letting them in? Why are you constantly letting them take from your empty cup? When your cup is full, sure, give here or there. No big deal. Take it. I don't need it. My cup is full. But if your cup is not full, you need to put that boundary up and keep it up. You need to learn how to fill your cup. Be kind to yourself before you're kind and generous to others. My husband and I talk about this all the time because we're very giving people. We want to give, we want to help, we want to support. But we're in a time in our life that right now we don't have that option. We have depleted all of our resources and we are struggling and we do not have that option. And yet every now and then we still do it and we don't regret it at all because it's something that we want to do, but we feel it. It hurts. It's not good. And nobody ever, I can't say nobody ever, sometimes they don't give back. And sometimes they don't offer a hand when you need it, like you did when they did. And that's a boundary you're like, unfortunately, it's a boundary that you've learned because you've lost your trust. And I don't want you to get that way. I don't want you to get that way. I don't want you to have to learn the hard way. That now you have to put a boundary up because you can no longer trust these people because they're not in the corner the way that you're you're in their corner. They just don't care the way that you care. And it's so hard. I'm constantly like, why am I different? Why am I not like these people? Why why can't I be like them? Like I feel like they're succeeding and growing from the bad things that they do. And here I'm kind and nice and I don't feel like I'm always succeeding. I feel like I am treading, trying to get over the wall or trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying and I can't. But here's the thing is that I have to just keep trying and I have to learn to be kind to myself in the process, to forgive myself in the process, to move forward in this process, to fill my cup in the process and not worry about these other people not use them to compare my life to their life because they could be in the same position I am. They just know how to put up those walls a little bit better than I do. So it's important that we build boundaries, bitch. So important. I need you to just pick one for today, for today, and then maybe two or three for the week, the rest of the week. Pick your boundary and stick to it. I know that I need to do, not need to do yoga. I love to do yoga. It's something I, I enjoy. It fills my cup. It really helps me. And I, it does cut a little bit into my work time. But if I maybe drop the kids off a few minutes earlier at school and come back home and do yoga and be a few minutes later to work, it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's a boundary I put up. And the more I keep putting it up and not being like, oh, it's okay. I can skip it today. The more I keep doing it, the more I fill my cup. And the more I fill my cup, the kinder and nicer human I am because I love getting yoga and I love feeling stretched and happy and, and everything like that. So if I just stick to my boundary and do that thing that I want to do, it's like a ripple effect of happiness. Or I feel like a ripple effect into my, like little droplets into my cup. Rain on my face. You know, like, it, it's so helpful. It's, it's. It sounds so simple though, like put up, put up that wall, put up that boundary. It sounds so simple, but you really have to break it down to you. Okay. What's your boundary? Um, mine is I want to do yoga in the morning, right? Okay. So now that you have this boundary in place, 
what are you gonna do to implement it? Okay, I'm going to have to get the kids to school a little bit earlier. Okay, how how are you gonna do that? Okay, I have to get to work a little bit later. Okay, what what are you gonna do? You know, once you start wearing like, oh no, what are people gonna think? What are they gonna say? Are they gonna think I'm lazy? So how do I get over that? How do I how do I support myself? How do I extend kindness to myself and how do I avoid the guilt that I might feel from not working hard enough even though I'm working? And how do I make sure I don't overextend myself? Because that's a big one my therapist and I have been talking about is that when that guilt comes up, I tend to overextend myself. So I got a little late to work. I feel guilty that I missed a few minutes or that I wasn't there before everyone or et cetera, et cetera. And then I will... I will take that and I will work harder because of it. I will push myself harder. I will do more. I will work later. So I have to make sure, okay, because I did that doesn't mean that I need to add more to my plate. Doesn't mean that I need to stay later. Still do the same time. Make sure you're getting done what you need to get done. Don't cut things out that need to get done unless it's sacrificing your mental health and and all that that's even more I feel like I'm in, I'm in a vicious circle now it's a lot it's heavy you kind of just have to start I know what I'm doing right now is not working I know that I'm struggling and I know that I need to I need to do more and I need to do it in a way that fills my cup versus constantly taking from it and depleting myself and so I know that I need to set boundaries. I know that I need to find time for myself. And I know that I need to figure out new strategies, new things to do. And um, I know that I love podcasts and I love to keep doing them. And I haven't done another podcast in a long time. And so this is really important that I cut out time to do this. And I, I need you to find those things that are important to you. I need you to find those things that make you happy. I need you to find those things that sound scary but also sound exciting. Because starting a YouTube channel and a podcast sounded scary, but it also sounded really cool. And I deal with imposter syndrome constantly. I'm sure I will be for imposter. Because I deal with imposter syndrome all the time. I I feel like I'm it's a week-to-week -week battle. And I'm slowly getting better. And my therapist and I work about how I feel like I'm a different person from week to week. And I've been really working on that, trying to find who I truly am so I don't constantly feel like I'm flip-flopping all the time or wishy-washy. Um, such a millennial word. <laughs> uh, but I'm working on that and I'm trying to figure out how to get over that imposter feeling and just be me. Just be who I am. I'm not, I don't find myself on social media as much. I post to social media but I don't find myself scrolling as much through social media that's when I start comparing that's when I start thinking I'm not good enough that's what I'm start thinking like what do I have to offer like what makes me you know why am I so special and the thing really is is that aren't we all aren't we all special don't we all have something to give and offer aren't all of our life paths different and and can't somebody relate to us I mean if I'm if I'm doing something I used to think the answer was if one person if I reach one person and make them happy that's it no if I make me happy if I do something that fills my heart and soul if I do something that feels like it's right then I'm doing something right it is not about other people I do want to help other people, but I want to help other people through my journey of helping myself because I want them to see that that's what it is. I can't be a light for everybody if my light doesn't shine. If I'm constantly taking my light and giving it to other people, how am I ever going to keep finding a way to light myself up? If I'm like, oh, here's a little light inside me. It's growing. I can't wait till it fills myself. And then somebody's like, oh, wait, I want some. I don't have enough. And you give it to them. How long is it going to take till you light that little spark again? It's going to be a while. And you keep doing that. You keep giving your spark away. Stop giving your spark away. Start lighting your soul on fire and 
passing on the brightness, the extra. You can't, you can't start a little fire and then take the fire to start another fire, but then this one never really extinguished. So now this one's burnt out. You are burning yourself out. People around you see that you are burnt out. I am being told constantly, are you okay? You seem burnt out. No, I am burnt out and I'm working on it. So eventually I can be a bright light for those around me, but I need to be a bright light for myself first. I need to learn that it's okay to do things for yourself, that it doesn't make you a bitch, that you shouldn't feel guilty, that you do have to set boundaries, healthy boundaries, that you do have to put up a wall every now and then, that you don't have to do those things just because they want you to. You don't have to say yes just because they want you to. When they give you an ultimatum, let them. Do not sacrifice yourself for an ultimatum. And learn to stop giving ultimatums because it's not nice and it's not fair. I am guilty of that. I am guilty of doing it to my family, to my husband. I give ultimatums all the time. But the more I learn that that is not okay, that that is not healthy, that that is not kind, it's that's it. And Maybe ultimatums are okay when it comes to healthy boundaries, but let's say it in a word like, instead of an ultimatum, give a healthy boundary. No, I won't anymore. No, I can't come. No, I'm sorry. It's just not going to work. You don't even have to give an excuse. You can just say no. No. Sorry. No. Can't. End of story. Why is that so hard? Because I say it like it's easy, but I've had to do that recently and it's hard. Saying no is so hard, especially to people you love and care about, especially to people you love and care about who are going through a tough time and you, you yourself are going through a lot and you don't know how to explain me too. You don't know how to explain like, I wish you knew what I was going through. You don't know how to explain, I get that you're going through a hard time. So am I because you don't want to devalue what they're going through and you don't want to make them feel bad. So sometimes saying no is just the nicest, best option. And when they say why, just say, you know, I can't really explain it right now, but eventually with time. And if they choose to cut you out because of that, that's on them. It's gonna hurt, yeah, it hurts. I've been there a lot of times this year, way too many times. And I just want you to know, build those boundaries, bitch keep building them because the people who are going to be within those boundaries are people who are going to help you with your light. And eventually when your light is bright, you are going to be that person for other people. And that, that's what I want to be. That's who I want to be. That is the goal. I want to be such a bright light for myself that I can just pass it on to other people. Like, like it's nothing. Hey, you want a cookie? <laughs> like, of course, who doesn't want cookies? So build your boundaries. Let me know what boundaries you're building. I love to hear. I love when you guys interact with me. I love, I love it. You guys are amazing. I have so many of you who are waiting for this next podcast. I appreciate you so much. I am working on so many things. I am, I started a red bubble for my Unfuck Yourself because I have so much art and quotes and things that I love to make. I love, I enjoy it. And it really just, it lights my fire. It gives me a spark and I just, it helps me be a better light. And so all those links are down below. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see my whole alphabet. C is next. Let me see if you can guess what C, C is going to be. C is for, like, what do you think it is? I mean, A is for apathy. B is for build boundaries, bitch. Let's see what C is for. And we're just going to keep going with the alphabet. There's also no rhyme or reason. I used to post podcasts every Wednesday, but whew, three toddlers, life is hectic. I'm a mom and a wife and a business owner, and most people who aren't even those things are just as busy as I am, so that's not an excuse. I'm just saying I'm busy, and, and I have boundaries that I'm trying to set. So when I have time, I will get you the next podcast, and I hope it's soon because I really enjoy doing them. I love sharing with you guys. I love talking. Um, to myself, I guess, but I really feel like I'm talking to you guys. I really feel like I'm spreading my light and I, I really love that and I appreciate you if you're still here with me and you're listening. 
I adore you. I think you're amazing. And thank you for joining my growth group because a lot of you are in there and you guys give me great feedback and you guys give me great ideas. And I appreciate you and I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to listen to that imposter syndrome. I'm going to build those boundaries. I am going to get over the things that I need to get over in terms of health. And it's not my phone. I don't know what phone is in me. And not in a way of like get over it. No, it's more like let your light shine. Like you don't have to get over it. You just need to stop stopping yourself from being you because you have so much to offer. You have so much to give and you don't have to feel like you're something special for that. Everybody has a different journey. Everybody has a different path. Everybody who is where you want to be was where you are now. Everybody who is where you want to be is where you are now. I mean, those people started from nothing. I, The best stories are those people who literally thought they couldn't, could do it and were told that they couldn't. Or they started from absolutely nothing and became what they felt was something or what you feel is something. Because really, what only makes them something, what makes them so special is, is their story, their path, their what they've turned out to be, what they've worked so hard towards. And we don't have to kill ourselves for that. No, we just need to know what lights our soul on fire. You know, what makes our spark, what, what causes us to be a light and what shines that light to other people to want to be like us. And it's not that I want people to be like me. It's that I want people to be who they are. I want people to listen. I want people to be like, wow, she gave me that spark to be who I've always wanted to be, who I've always had within me, where my path is going. You know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy or insane. I mean, you, it, it can be. I mean, you can go back to school, get your degree. You can, you know, start over. You can, you know, start again. You can, there's so many options. We're given this life and we think that our life is this way and it will never change. And in reality, change is happening all the time. And yeah, it's scary and crazy, but it's also so beautiful the options that we have and what comes from scary things what comes from change is just insane so I will leave you with that I love you stay kind be a light you are beautiful and unfuck yourself get out of your head or get in it sometimes it's not about getting out of it it's getting in it and finding who you are it's about spreading your wings so to say it's about being true to who you are, being that light you are always meant to be, be it. I love you and stay kind. Have a beautiful day.